Hey everyone, and welcome to the Caffeine at Midnight podcast. We have my first guest ever, Mr. Mark Carter. Mark, could you please introduce yourselves to the Caffeine at Midnight audience? Sure thing. Um, hi, I'm Mark Carter. I'm the founder of Lace It Up Sports, and I'm uh, honored to be here on your first podcast. Well, my first podcast with guests. Normally, I do yes, this at 11, exactly. uh, yeah. 11 p.m. in the closet when the kids are asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So can you tell us more about your organization? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, I've, my, my background has been around athletics for a long time, both coaching, um, mentoring, having my own family, myself involved in all different levels of athletics. And for me, um, we founded Lace It Up Sports back in 2010 with the idea that we would provide uh, an atmosphere where we can teach um, life skills through sports. And what that really means for us is, and this is not limited to guys, you know, it's, 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 it's whoever, it's based on youth, right? So, you know, we look at kids, it originally started with kids, you know, playing a little bit of youth sports, age six up through 12, because, you know, we did do some athletic training, still do some athletic training, that's a portion of what we do. Um, but I think with a lot of the areas where we do uh, leadership, type functions, we've extended it now to where we're looking to work with more and more high school students. Um, we've sponsored seven on seven teams. We sponsored leadership um, seminars, uh, brought in a lot of guest speakers for different things and are just really trying to provide a base of a good solid information for kids, um, for parents uh, who are involved in youth sports, um, whether it be um, uh, how do you say, it? you know, the things that deal with it athletically. Uh, we'd like, want to make sure we talk about health and nutrition. And then we also want to talk about kind of things as the kids get older, what happens when, um, A, maybe you're starting to be recruited or you're looking for avenues for training for certain types of sports. Um, and, and the whole thing, though, is really to have an attitude of fun and a good spirit about it. So, yeah, we, we, we're really focused on trying to provide a holistic training and mentoring atmosphere for kids that way. And parents too along the way, you know? Yeah, absolutely. That sounds great. Are you, are you, um, are most of your members in a specific location or do you reach people from all states through virtual programs? Well, we can do virtual programs. Um, we originally started this uh, in the Chicago land area. There's still some folks there. We ran some seven on seven football teams, some other types of training camps there. Um, and now, now we're in Chattanooga, Tennessee with connections in Atlanta and also still in Chicago. But we can do virtual stuff too. Yeah, I think any of the materials that we develop, uh, any of the things like our podcast and some of the other things that we do are available to anybody anywhere. And we're open to working with people everywhere. That's great. All right. So my next question for you then is, can you tell me about a memorable caffeine experience, either really good or really bad? Or if you don't have a memorable experience, can you just tell us like how caffeine plays a role in your day-to-day -day life? I'll add a couple. I, I think I have two. Now I'll, I'll give okay. it to you a little bit, a little bit that way. Um, remember very vividly, uh, you know, caffeine two ways. And this is kind of what what I thought about with, with lacing up. I remember my own experience with caffeine, training as an athlete in both high school and in college, and uh, between studying trying to maintain, um, uh, uh, you know, a, a certain level of awareness, awakeness or whatever we want to call it. Mm -hmm. You know, I can think of a time, I can think of a time where, you know, just, just going back far enough before you, you looked at really kind of the caffeine options that we have now, you had coffee, Mountain Dew, Coke, and, and some other, you know, powders, of course, that we thought we had. So literally it was a matter of, you know, Hey, if, 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 if two is the recommended dosage of no dose, then maybe four are better. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and between between the the disorientation that it brings to you, because I mean, I'm like, I'm taking too much. You know, I just remember thinking, oh, this is gonna really help out, but you know, just feeling like garbage when it was done, and 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 
really not being able to focus the way that I thought I could focus um, from 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 using the caffeine that way, you know. And then, so it, it was it was at times. There's been times, you know, you kind of figure out with coffee, whatever else, how to kind of make it a little more palatable, a little easier for yourself. Man, I can I can very well remember times like, okay, I got I have I have training, I've got you know study for a final, uh, all this other stuff going on. So it's like, yeah, you know, I'll just pound this stuff and stay up. I mean, I, I you know, I, I don't think I, I slept for, you know, like three days, you know, and then my hair looked like Don King's, you know, <laughs> so it was not, it was not a good experience. Yeah. Um, then, then I think the thing more recently though, and this kind of speaks to kind of what we do at Lace Up, one of the things, you know, I, I, I'd love to hear from you. So your thoughts on it. it's like I've had and seen parents, you know, and in kids. And this is all the way from youth sports through um, I, I'm going to say, say, you know, going into high school where the caffeine, the energy drinks, the different things now have been used to like stimulate kids. And so I've seen it where like five, six, seven year old kids will take in, you know, uh, uh, you know, two Red Bulls before a little league game of something, you know, and I'm like that, that's not how I felt like it was made, you know, and then you wonder why the kids along with, you know, what we talk about with sugar, we'll leave that out, but <laughs> why don't we off the walls, yeah. right? So my experience has been, um, you know, a lot of times though, I think when you figure out what you're doing, kind of how you can mix a caffeine, drink in, things like that to kind of keep you alert. Um, but now early on and with some of the kids that I've worked with and things like that, it's like, I've seen some instances where, I mean, especially really small kids where it kind of, it's scary to me to see, um, energy drinks, especially used in that, in that vein. It's like, it just seems oh, like yeah. they're too young, you know, and it's too much caffeine for their body weight is what I kind of think. But yeah, especially when you're gosh, five and six, I, I can't even imagine. I mean, like you said, like that wasn't, you know, when I was when I was going to college and juggling multiple jobs, like your options were regular and decaf. Like you didn't have Starbucks on every corner. Energy drinks weren't really around yet. And so there weren't a whole lot of options. My mom used to work night shift and use Mountain Dew. So like we've mm -hmm. come so far and there yeah. are so many different options, but still not really any of them are meant for five and six year olds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think, I think one of the interesting things, you know, for me, was you know I grew up I grew up in Florida, right? And and growing up in Tampa, you know, with a large Cuban community there. I mean, the the, the café con leche and just the Cuban coffee was always there with the little tiny shots, man. But it had a lot of kick. <laughs> that's you know that's, that's kind of how it was. But it's 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 interesting to find that use, you know. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we try to do, like I said, at Lace It Up, is really to make sure that kids are getting the good information about kind of what to put in their bodies and, you know, how to optimize um, energy while they're training, you know, and how do you use downtime and how do you come off of it on the other side of it? You know, it's, it's always kind of one of those things where, where along with um, the behaviors, right. That you try to model for young athletes that they can carry over into other parts of their life, right? Being, you know, again, being concerned about how they eat, how they rest mm -hmm. and things like that. You know, how do you, how do you, how do you say these things that you can go drink and they tout all kinds of benefits, you know, what's true, what's not, and how do you, how do you make your way through it? Absolutely. So this is the part of the, of the show where I'd like to say, you know, do you have any questions for the caffeine expert? being me. Yeah. <laughs> do you have a question for me? Yeah, I do. I really do. And and this this to me deals with again, we're talking about anywhere from little kids, 6, 7, 8 years old, all the way up through, you know, kids who are getting ready to go to college, 18, 19 years old. What are some of the things that you've seen um how would you, how would you, you know, kind of how can you communicate what maybe the benefits of energy drinks are? Mm -hmm. Probably a two-part question. Are there any things with some of the other um, items you find in energy drinks? You know, are there any things there that you say, well, there's there's ginseng or these other things there that would be good or bad or you know, just how do you kind of assess it in stages for young users of caffeine and energy drinks? 
So what have I seen in terms of energy drinks and children uh, in terms of like trends as well as uh, different ingredients that they should look out for as they as they approach the energy drink market? Absolutely. Okay, so that's a great question. Um, in terms of trends, uh, one of the papers I read in the British Medical Journal about caffeine intake among youth and adolescents was looking at how many minors, basically, like how many kids and adolescents and young adults consume caffeine on a daily basis. And they found that those that had more than two servings of energy drinks, they didn't really get into the ingredient combinations per se, but mm -hmm. they found that those that had at least two cans or two servings a week reported more headaches and dizziness and gosh, what was the third one? It was like all symptoms of caffeine overdose as well as caffeine withdrawal. It was dizziness, headaches, uh, nausea, and uh, like um, uh, a temper, like being being upset. So like uh, you have all of those symptoms when you're going through uh, caffeine withdrawals as well as when you've had too much caffeine. So if minors are experiencing any of those symptoms, they want to maybe reevaluate how much caffeine they're getting. In terms of recommended caffeine, the U.S. American uh, Pediatrics, uh, gosh, I'm butchering the name, uh, American Academy of Pediatrics, I think, yes. um, in the U.S., recommends that uh, those under 18 don't have more than 100 milligrams of caffeine. So 100 milligrams is what they say is in a standard cup of coffee. So okay. essentially, if you're less than 14, I don't recommend any caffeine at all, like period, zero. Wow. Because, okay. <laughs> <laughs> because if you're under 14, your body is going through so many changes and your brain is going through so many changes and caffeine affects the body and especially the brain so much that one of two things is going to happen. One, it's going to be super easy to overdose on caffeine because your body weight is so small and your body is changing so much. But secondly, if you start drinking caffeine at age 12, at age 14, by the time you're age 34 and you have a, you know, a kid that's waking you up at 3 a.m., caffeine's not going to work anymore because wow. you're going to be, you know, you know, you're going to have been drinking it for two decades by the time you're 30. And so your body's going to be used to it and it's not going to work when you need it the most. Like imagine if you're 14 and you have a monster energy for the first time, which is 160 milligrams or like a cup and a half of a, you know standard coffee. Right. If you start doing that at age 14, by the time you get to college and you have like legit all nighters for your exams, then you're going to need probably twice as much caffeine. You're going to need 260, 360 milligrams of caffeine just to like feel that effect. So those are the two biggest concerns I have with people under 14 having caffeine is, you know, they're, they're going to get used to it or it's just going to be so easy to overdose because their bodies are so small and are still developing. In terms of the ingredients, one thing I see that worries me a lot is this trend of energy drinks having really fun names like rainbow unicorn and then having 300 milligrams of caffeine, which is Wow. Almost a whole day's worth for an adult, let alone a minor. Minors, right. as I mentioned, uh, the American Academy of Pediatrics says minors should not have more than 100 milligrams. So 300 milligrams in an energy drink is way too much. For an adult, you can have 400. So even those 300 milligram drinks are almost too much for an adult. So what I recommend for minors is First of all, if you're under 14, don't have any caffeine at all. You can get plenty of energy from B vitamins. Even carbonation has this perceived energy where you feel like it's working, even if it's just the placebo effect. But then you have to read your labels. You have to read your labels, labels so carefully, regardless of what age you are, because the cap, the total caffeine content is going to matter a lot more than if it's regular caffeine or green tea or coffee. I'm more concerned about the total caffeine from all sources, okay. and whether it's like natural caffeine or not. So that's that's one of the best things that um, minors and young adults can do is, you know, know how much caffeine you personally can have and how it affects your body. Try and stay under 100 milligrams if you're under 18 and read your labels, read, read, read your labels. Wow. Okay. that That's really cool. Helpful too, because 
you know, the other thing that pops up, you know, kind of in conversation, this is like the combination of caffeine and sugar too. Yes. You know, and, and of course kids are you know going to be attracted to, attracted to the sugar, you know, and, and that helps. But, um, Oh, another question, and I hope you don't mind a- a- answering a second. Bring it on, yeah. What What are some of the signs of like um, the signs of, of of literally the caffeine overdose, the caffeine withdrawal in a kid? I mean, do you see anything to deal with with heart rate, any of those types of sim- symptoms? I mean, especially when we're dealing with you know kids, childhood obesity, other things like that, but. What things that you find, do you find things like that that are systemic that like, you know, heart rate, blood pressure, any of those things from a those kid things that, are, that are interesting? Hard, yeah, those things are hard to measure in young kids and young kids may not even be able to tell you what they're feeling, but mm-hmm. essentially they're going to feel headaches. They're going to feel upset stomachs and um, upset stomach. Um, they might have like nausea, diarrhea, vomiting. Um, and then they might, you know, if you can see that they're like agitated or they're, you know, they're like trembling or like they can't Mm -hmm. sit still, you know, those are some visible signs that parents can look out for that maybe kids may not be able to recognize what is happening in their little, their little bodies. Or, you know, I say little meaning six-year-olds, but also a little body, like a 16 year old may not be little if it's like this big football player. Right. But those are some of the, those are some of the early onset symptoms of caffeine overdose. When you get to like the higher doses, like 600 milligrams a gram, that's when you start getting into like the heart arrhythmia, um, even blood pressure, like uh, caffeine increases your blood pressure a little bit, kind of like the equivalent of when you go up a flight of stairs, like you can feel your heart rate and your blood pressure increase a little bit temporarily. Um, But when you get into like, you know, 600 milligrams, a gram of caffeine, that's when it starts to to become like very obvious that something is wrong. Like you need to go to the hospital because you're having trouble like breathing. You're having trouble sitting down. You know, you might, you might feel like your head is about to explode. Those are the symptoms that happen like later on with the larger doses, the, the smaller doses, the early onset symptoms are going to be more like with the stomach, the upset stomach and the headache. Okay, cool. Cool. I mean, that's great information. Cause I, I, you know, you just wonder, you know, how it affects your, you know, how it affects you personally. Yeah. But you always wonder, you know, it's like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm working with these kids and stuff. And it's like, and, and you know, that, that, that you see them drinking these things at sporting events you know, the huge cans and you're like, yeah. oh, you know, I just wish, you know, but then, then there's the appeal of Mountain Dew and other things like that too, that maybe not be energy drinks, but again, we know where they're kind of loaded with caffeine. So, mm-hmm. oh, that's great. That's cool. Well, and that there's helped me out a lot. <laughs> well, good, good. I mean, and I think it's really important for parents to kind of think of caffeine the way they do with alcohol, like maybe it affects you fine. And maybe it affects you differently than your spouse or your partner or your neighbor. Mm -hmm. Um, But the source matters, like a glass of wine or a case of beer is going to be different than, you know, giving your, your two-year-old a few sips of tequila, right? Like maybe a sip of your beer at dinner isn't going to hurt them, but like a sip of, uh, you know, a whole shot of vodka, probably, you know, probably too much. The same thing with caffeine. Like my two-year-old sees me drinking energy drinks and he wants some. And I tell him, no, that's, that's mommy's caffeine. It's going to give you, you know, an owie tummy. And so he knows that at age two, he knows that caffeine is not for him. Just like he knows that, you know, mommy's, mommy's alcohol is not for him. So if parents parents think of caffeine and alcohol the same way and teach their kids about moderation, the same way that they do with alcohol, I feel like that's a good approach to it. You know, that, that kind of like helps you understand that it's, it's not for you. Mommy can drink it. Daddy can drink it, but this is not for you. You know, that's cool. That's good. I mean, that's, that's a, that's a great way to think of it too. I've never, I've never thought of even, you know, framing it that way, but that, that's a really good way to think about it. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, um, we're running out of time here. I feel like you and I could talk all day long, which we definitely should. We should definitely talk some more. I could come on your podcast and we could talk a lot more about, you know, youth and caffeine. We will. So for today, um, is there anything that you would like our listeners to know or anything else that um, 
that you want them to to know about you and your organization before we sign off? Yeah, just um, you know, you can find us at uh, at you know on Twitter at, at Lace It Up Sports. You can find us online at laceitupsports.com. Um, and again, we're putting out information that we think is helpful to parents, kids dealing with, like I said, youth sports leadership. And we have a podcast that we do uh, called Three Men in a Pig Skin. That's a little more for the for the for the football loving adults. Um, so it's a little bit separated from the kids stuff and the youth stuff, but it's still a lot of fun. So literally anything, that, any information people want to know, some of the folks that we've got working with us, we've got some ex-NFL players uh, that help out. We've got uh, a lot of people that like, like you, for instance, that come to help on the sports nutrition side. So any of that's available from the website, and we're happy to provide that information when folks like. And I can be reached at mark at laceitupsports.com. Perfect. And I'll put all of that in the podcast show notes and in the YouTube description and everything. So thank you so much, Mark. I've really enjoyed this chat and we appreciate your time. Thanks for joining the Caffeine at Midnight podcast. Thank you.